don't panic. <laughs> Bones sinking like stones, all that we fall for. Homes, places we've grown, all of us are done for. We live in a beautiful world. Yeah, we do, yeah, we do. We live in a beautiful world. And the, the show's about you, PJ, not the song. Good afternoon. So, hello. Why did you pick that song? I think "Don't Panic" struck a chord because I know so many people that do panic um, when it comes to relationships and sex education, and I thought it was really lovely just to give that message out that you don't need to panic if you're a parent, if you're a member of staff, if you're a young person, because it's okay. We just need to talk about this stuff. Absolutely, and and uh, so I'm, I'm remembering back to my days of. of sex education we just sniggered and goodness knows what else and and i think things have changed in the last 40 years i'm, I'm yeah probably longer than 40 years um but anyway pj um tell us who you are what you do so i'm pj founder of rephrase an organization that provides healthy relationships and sex education without the awkwardness and okay. basically we exist to create space safe spaces for young people as well as adults it's kind of evolved into all stages and ages um, to talk about stuff because young people often are waking up with questions every day looking for answers and so often turning to pornography or their peers for information so we are about creating that space um, opening it up removing the shame and the taboo just because we want to be able to provide answers you know the accurate answers and just make people realize it's okay to talk about this stuff because we've had generations of people before who have either felt too unconfident or nervous anxious about it and then they raise up their young people and then they become adults and raise their children. And this cycle kind of repeats. So, um, you know, we're living in a sexualized society, whether we like it or not. And it's really about empowering young people, informing them so they can be critical thinkers and develop healthy relationship behaviours. Fantastic. I'm just thinking, as you're saying that, in my day, we didn't have the internet or anything like that. So, we, we you know, we, we couldn't go and find out things that way. I, I can remember my dad telling me about the birds and the bids. And that was like, yeah, that was interesting. Um, but, yeah, things have moved on, haven't they? Things have moved yeah. on. And we, we, we can talk about these things. And, and like you say, it's without the awkwardness. So I love that. We're going to come on to that in a little bit. I just want to find out a little bit about um, how you're getting on on social media and um, what, what you think of LinkedIn. Okay. Well, I love LinkedIn. Um, for me as a business, LinkedIn is better, whereas I kind of exist on other platforms just to be a presence, because in this day and age, as a business owner, you need to be out there. But LinkedIn's great because I find people watch you from afar, from afar, and they just suss out your vibe, your content, your ethos, and the person behind the business. So actually, it kind of breaks down all that awkwardness with a cold call. They suss you out and then make contact. Um, and I, I just think that's really helpful. It's a professional platform, but you can kind of give that glimmer of who you are as well and why you do what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that because you're, you're talking with other people that, that are running businesses, that are connecting with other people as well. And it's absolutely superb. And people like Brian, who is in the US of A. So hi, Brian. Good morning. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us today. Um, if anyone's got any questions, please just shout out because, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're happy to answer any question, PJ. Yep. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Um, and yeah, we got it. We got it. Um, so when I when I upload this to the podcast, um, depending on what we've talked about, I've got to tick a box whether it's uh, suitable for minors or or not. So uh, um, I think swearing swearing would, would obviously, um, but I think what we're talking about today should be absolutely fine unless someone comes in with an amazing question, um, which we don't have to publish or or ask anyway. So you like LinkedIn? Do you use other social media platforms, PJ? I do. I'm on Facebook um, and Insta as a business. Um, but like I said, it's more about having a presence out there. So I get engagement, but don't tend to get business from that. Um, so okay. I know I need to focus my intention on LinkedIn. Um, and most of the time, it's all through word of mouth or recommendation anyway. So it's just about, you know, running a business in today's age. You do. I think you need to have that social media presence just because people don't know you exist and know what you're about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this is a good question. <laughs> From uh, I'm gonna say Jalela. What's the favorite, my, your favorite and least favorite part of your job? 
That's an amazing question. It's good, um, isn't it? <laughs> I'll start with my least favourite. That is running a business and juggling the different elements when ultimately you've got a passion and drive to do what you want to do. And that's why you started the business. But you've got to balance that. So there's kind of a marriage between the different elements. So sometimes that's a little bit frustrating. Um, my favourite thing is being in the company of people, um, young people, particularly when they ask those questions and there's a freedom. There's that kind of moment when they know they can ask questions and there's no judgment. There's no criticism. It's just let's talk about it. And you can genuinely see them relax and kind of go, oh, that's OK then. And they've got the, you know, they've got these worries and burdens potentially for years if they can't talk about it. And then suddenly you've given them this space and the questions I get, like the anonymous questions are brilliant. Um, and the feedback, the anonymous feedback, because you kind of think that's where this is happening. And I get goosebumps sometimes with what I read. Um, and when I work with parents or staff, I physically see their shoulders lower. So like they relax, they kind of go, oh, it's OK, because you're almost giving them permission to ask all these questions. And they realise it's not quite as bad or scary as they thought. So I love it. I absolutely love it. So that's why Rephrase exists. Oh, fantastic. So um, tell me. Have you got any business from what you do on um, on LinkedIn? Yeah, I have. And like I said, people watch from afar. So I've been contacted. I travel all over the country. So LinkedIn means that there's no kind of boundaries to counties. Um, and in one month, I ended up traveling to Wiltshire, Surrey, London, Hull, and then back to Devon. <laughs> so it was wow. it was frantic. Um, and not every month's like that. But it just shows that actually you've got this kind of platform to connect professionally um, and it's brilliant. I love it. No, oh, fantastic. We met um, because we, we both live in Devon. We met on a, on a stage in Devon, didn't we? When we were doing an event locally. Yeah, no, superb. In, in fact, <clears throat> uh, I took a photo of you and I used that in my banner last week to <laughs> uh, promote you. Um, what on earth am I holding and what on earth are you resting on my shoulder? Well, I've got um, my little friends here, actually. So we have syphilis. Okay. And nice. I think you also had chlamydia on your shoulder. That's I, I did. Yes, I did. It's cleared up uh, now, so that's fine. We had a few vulvas. Right. You okay. Know, it was a fairly okay. average networking event. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and what was the blue thing I was holding then? <laughs> ah, oh, I've got that. Oh, so I have it here. Yeah, that is the internal structure of the clitoris. There we go. There we yeah. go. Indeed. I never thought, I never <laughs> thought that I'd be talking about these items on, I'm sure on, you didn't. <laughs> on, 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 on my on my show. Um, so they're crocheted, uh, yeah. which makes it more fun and makes it yeah. easier to talk about for for the for the youngsters. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what are the what are the questions that you get most? It's well, for starters, that's less triggering because I don't know who's in the room. So I always have to think about the one percent. Um, and you don't know people's experiences. So it's very much about trying to engage on a level which is non-threatening, but also enables you to then have those conversations about accurate body parts. Um, and this comes back to safeguarding all the time. So it's very much about that, helping them be physically and emotionally safe. Um, and that goes down to knowing body parts. So pet names are fine, but actually let's talk about what the, the names are as well. Um, so if you need to go to a GP or um, or something happens, you know, which you're concerned about, you can actually articulate it. Um, I had a really sad story of a year six student who went to school and said to the teacher, oh, my uncle wants to eat my cookie. And the teacher said, that's great. It's really good to share. And it was a massive safeguarding issue, which was missed because she wasn't aware of the pet name. So, it, you know, there's a really serious side to all of this. But these resources are just a way of kind of breaking the ice. And, you know, as, as we did at that networking event, you know, we threw kind of chlamydia out and Andy caught it. So, you know, it just breaks the ice. And that's what this is so important to be able to have these conversations. So to say to someone, you know, nice one, Andy, you've caught chlamydia. It was wonderful. Yeah, it absolutely did, did, did break the ice. I love that. Um, so <laughs> your... Your target audience then, who are you speaking to most or working um, with most? Originally, I had imagined it would be students from secondary school age because that was kind of where my training started. And it still is, but it's really evolved. And what I'm finding now is I've got lots of um, external organisations like the Probation Service, Devon and Cornwall Police, the YMCA, Pregnancy Centres, um, all looking for their staff to feel empowered 
And so any organisation that works with young people or young adults, um, often those people in those kind of teacher roles or leadership roles are going, ah, because, you know, we've all got our baggage and our fears. So actually to go in and help them, empower them and educate them to be better educators in their context, that seems to be a lot of what I do at the moment. So it's, I mean, with all these things, it varies, but I've seen that kind of shift Um and for parent groups, it's often the fear of, you know, the impact of pornography on sex and relationships. How do you have those conversations? And we know from the latest report from the Children's Commissioner that children are as young as 13. And we know young as seven and eight who are accessing it by accident, but it's happening. So it's like that real, let's talk about this. This is the reality. Um, we need to help parents, carers, teachers, staff, whatever, to be in that position so they can have those conversations and you know develop that poker face even if you're cringing inside by developing that calm poker face you're giving that young person permission to ask questions and come back and talk to you and if they choose to ask you a question that is a massive privilege because they've chosen you so mm, yeah my mm. work varies it does vary definitely there's a lot of reframing going on there, isn't there, PJ? Yeah. And that's why I've called it rephrase as well. So it's short for providing healthy relationships and sex education. But rephrase is about rephrasing that conversation because we need to go beyond risks, reproduction and disease because there is so much more. So, yeah. Yeah, no. And it, and it's, and again, it's 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 about getting a healthy relationship, isn't it? Not yeah. making it sordid, dirty or, or, or whatever or whatever yeah. else, isn't it? Well, yeah, because we grow up without a toolkit and yet we hear mm. about those relationships all the time. But how do we know what that looks like? And if we don't have role models, how do we know what it feels like? So that's where it's really important to go over those kind of key concepts for all ages. Um, and when I work with domestic abuse survivors, they tell me we just didn't know. We were never taught. So to identify toxic behaviour, naming it, calling it out is so powerful. And if we can give those tools to young people, um, you know, I was in a school and one of the there were year 10 students around 14, 15. And at the end of the session, after we'd been talking about red flag behavior, they wrote, I won't let him treat me in an unhealthy way anymore. Um, and we'd been talking specifically about gaslighting. So in that moment, I got goosebumps because I realized that student had not only recognized what was going on, they were able to name it and they're going to call it out which is life changing because actually, hopefully it means in a few years time, they won't be sitting in a domestic abuse group. So this stuff is so important. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking to youth workers as well, because I, I, I used to run a youth club years ago. Yeah. And, and so, so, you know, we, we never had any training on, on yeah. that sort of thing. And you've got a brilliant um, platform. If, you, if you're meeting regularly with young people, you are mm. in such a this position so you know if rephrase can come along and help you in your role that's amazing because you can reach mm. so many more people so are you out every single day teaching this i work full time but i'm not client facing every day because okay. obviously there's lots of different elements when you are running a business um so it's just as and when the bookings and needs are there um it's a bit of a roller coaster running a business as you can imagine mm. um so mm. it is one of the i've just i've learned to be on um, kind of be comfortable with the uncomfortable um, and in terms of like the social media side, there's a real pressure when you start a business to look at the engagement and the, the likes and all this stuff. And I've realized that actually people are watching you, even if they're not engaging, because people say stuff in real life. And I kind of go, oh, I had no idea you followed me, you know. Um, and it's just important, I think, to remember that it's the people you're impacting. So, you know, in that moment, even if it is one person that's heard one thing, that's going to make a difference to them that makes this worthwhile so um it's about kind of loving the social media side but also remembering actually it's about the people you're impacting and that's why what's important yeah no fantastic um sheila thank you sheila i love this question um and and i've got a i've got a grandson who's the same age so this is uh, absolutely perfect i teach my toddler anatom i can't say that word anatomically correct <laughs> names but what's the best response to the uncomfortable adult with a three-year-old correctly naming body parts? What a fantastic question. It is brilliant. And I would congratulate anybody who's teaching because like, you know, this is an arm or a limb. We have no issue. This is a nose, ears. We have no issue. But the minute we have that kind of uncomfortable feeling about those parts, we are saying, actually, these aren't things to talk about. There's a lot of shame around this. We shouldn't mention it. And that's the issue. So actually, we're talking just about body parts. 
So if we can give those young children names, um they are just learning all body parts the same and it's no it, you know they'll grow up to be healthier humans to be honest um, and like i said it is safeguarding and there is the element of medical health as well so really really important and i think if i was in the company of uncomfortable adults and a child said something um i would congratulate that child and said you know you'd say well done darling that's exactly right and then really be normal about it because the more we can normalize it we're going to help other adults who might be feeling uncomfortable to feel a bit more relaxed about it. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't call it a penis when 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 nanny when nanny Stella's around. Um, we'll, 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 we'll just call it a PP. But the rest of the time, it's fine. <laughs> and and that that is that is so right. Yeah, it, yeah. it is it is normalising it. Yeah, no, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Sheila. Great question, great question. And and that's the thing. So I, I guess we start teaching the children about these things when they're asking the questions you know not 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 wait until they're older because yes. you know that you know like you say this is an art that's yeah. a penis that's it yeah. and you it's know? like anything you know you wouldn't want a child to sit at math to see without teaching them cu the, the curriculum first so why are we expecting young people to grow up with this kind of safe understanding of sexuality and relationships if we don't even have the conversations or talk about mm. what the body parts are. So it really is like any other form of education. Um, and I genuinely think healthy relationships are the backbone to a functioning society. So we need to give people the skills. How do you communicate? How do you argue effectively? Because we're going to argue. We're all different humans. So all these things, you know, we kind of take for granted. Um, but it's just really important to, to help children from a young age. And when they ask questions, it's because they want to know. Mm. So, you know, it's fighting that that desire to go oh we'll just we'll leave it for another day and actually going this is amazing they want answers so let's talk about it and they'll only take you know they'll, the rest of it will go over their head they'll take what they can take at that age um but i always say it's better to have um one it's better to have 100 one minute conversations than have one no which way around is it 100 conversations so it's like it, basically don't try and have the talk. Don't do the talk. Think of it as scaffolding. So you're building up that kind of knowledge bank. Um, it's a kind of slow cooker approach rather than microwave cooking. That kind of yeah. idea. Yeah. And, and, and an open forum as well. So that, so that you know, with, with my grandson, with, with um, Sheila's toddler, it, it's sort of like just ask any question. It's absolutely fine. Um, yeah. And at that, at that age, it, it, every question is why, um, isn't yeah. it? And, and so, yeah, why, why not? Uh, and answer those questions you know i, I can remember you, you're, you're not old enough to know and, and you know i ask questions you know stop asking questions and stuff like that and i think well hang on a minute the, 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 the child is asking a question let's help them let's you know and, and look i really don't know let's google it together let's mm -hmm. find out together yeah um, it's good for them speak, to know that you don't have the answers it's good to learn together yeah absolutely absolutely and i think i think you, you, you're you're coming down to their level if you don't know as well and you know the honesty com comes out as well um how did you get into all of this pj <laughs> uh well from the age of 14 i knew i wanted to work in this field which was a little bit strange i know that's um, very strange and i was at the time i was at a catholic school as well and we had one remaining nun on the teaching staff so you can imagine the shock when I announced what I wanted to do. And at that stage, I wanted to be a sexual therapist. So, you know, said so that's what I wanted to do. Um, so from a really young age, I just knew that was a real kind of passion. And then I ended up working with year 10 and 11 students. And it was like a light bulb moment when I realised I wanted to be proactive and preventative rather than wait until further down the line um, when perhaps things are broken down and therapy is required. So it was that kind of let's invest in that age group. And that's kind of where it was born. Um, but as I said, it's evolving to adults as well at different stages and ages. Um, so, for example, pornography is, it is, doesn't discriminate. So there are people of all sorts of ages and stages that have been impacted um, negatively. So that brings its own issues. And so it's really it really is varied. And I think it's about just being available and helping in any way that rephrase can, really. Yeah. OK, what, what's the advice then to anybody that's got a teenager as a child what, what's what's the what's the best advice you know they start asking questions because because it, like, like you say it is a generational thing and we you know we've been brought up and it's sort of like we've kept it under the carpet and all that sort of malarkey um you know and your teenager comes home or, or might be, be a little bit younger mummy daddy here's a question for you what, what's what's your best advice there pj um first of all thank them for asking 
So acknowledge the question. And like also deep down, just remember, like I said, they've come to you with a question. That means they trust you and they feel they can ask you a question. And that is so huge. Whether you're a parent, carer, friend, relative, whatever it is, if that's happened, that's really exciting. OK, so it's acknowledging it, thanking them for it. And if you genuinely don't know, just say that's a really great question, but I don't know at the moment, but I will find out and make sure you do and get back to them. Because if you don't, you're then saying to them, actually, we don't talk about this. This is something we don't want to say, you know. Yeah, so it very yeah. much is. that. And then if you do have the answers, um, just break it down a bit. Try it again. Remember the poker face. Be really chilled and just give them a little bit of information. If they want more, they'll ask more or they might ponder on it and come back at a later time and ask more. Um, and that is, that's great because, again, it's opening up, having those conversations. Um, distancing techniques really great. So using stuff you might watch on TV or people out and about. Um, so you can talk about themes, but you're directing it at the other sort of scenario or person rather than at each other. Um, it's the same with eye contact. Try and avoid staring at each other when you're having the conversation. Just, you know, if you're driving or your hands are busy cooking or whatever it is, walking the dog. All of that can help create that chilled space. And it's just another conversation at the end of the day. Sure. Sure. No, I love that. I love that. Um, could I go to your website? Have you got resources there? So if my teenager comes up and says, oh, dad, da, 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 can I go to your website and find that information out there? Do you have resources? You, you can go to the website, but I don't have resources on the website. So it would be a case of contacting the office and then we'd have further chats about what was required. But okay. yeah, absolutely. The web website is there and available. Yeah. Have you written a book yet? No, I haven't actually. Someone suggested I should about the whole where it started from because it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> and since launching the business, the opportunities that have happened are mind blowing. Um, so maybe one day. Uh, OK, so so have you got time to tell us this journey and how it all started then? Well, it was from that age of 14, which is really yeah. weird, you know, and it kind of developed from there. Um, then I did psychology as my degree. And then I was going to specialise in sexual therapy and then had a family. So we ended up with three children, two of whom are twins. It was the best buy one, get one free offer we ever had. They're amazing. Wow. <laughs> um, so then just I did work that fitted in with family life. So it wasn't until a bit later that I actually decided to go for it. You know, they've, they're now kind of young adults. So it's kind of got to that stage where I'm able to kind of grow the business now. Um, but yeah, so it's been like that. And ever since then, it's been a case of stepping out of my comfort zone, which is incredibly scary. Um, and anyone running a business will get that. You know, there's the imposter syndrome. There's that yep. whole, ah, but I'm learning just to say yes and then panic later. Yes. <laughs> or yeah, or no, not that's... panic at all. Um, because you don't know what's coming, do you? And I just think being open to opportunities is really important. I, I had a guest on uh, of quite a while ago now, uh, Neville Wright, and he wrote the book, The Answer's Yes. Now, what's the question? And that's yeah. how he that's how he built his business. Yeah. Um, he went from cleaning windows to selling um his um business to Morrison's for 70 million. Um, all, all because all because of that. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so yeah, you you never know what's gonna happen. So I I do like that philosophy. Say yeah. yes and then worry about it afterwards because that, that's a great a great attitude to have because you never know. You really never know. And it's um, exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. You never know what any day's gonna be. So your kids, right? Yeah. Are they are they proud of their mum or is it embarrassing of what you do? They love it. No, they absolutely yeah. love it. I'm so thankful. I think because we were quite relaxed when we were, you know, raising them anyway. And it's just been it's in my DNA, so it feels very natural. But they're now they're young adults, they're so excited and they're so proud of it all and they love it. And they've said to me they love it when when they're new friends, like if they go to college and now they've left and they're doing some of their next jobs and things, they when they meet people and they say, Oh, what does your mum do? <laughs> they just and love what, it. What do they say? Like, it will either clear a room or people will go, wow, that's amazing. You know, tell me more. Um, but they just say, you know, she's a relationships and sex educator. And she helps empower young people. So it's great. They love it. And I love the fact they're excited about it. And they've become like mini rephrases because they talk to their friends and they give the advice. And I'm listening, thinking, that's brilliant. That's what I would have said. So they've taken on stuff as well. And then they're able to almost sow more seeds. So, you know, if they've got friends in toxic relationships, they're able to actually kind of articulate what's going on and say, you know, a bit worried about what I saw kind of thing. And I think that's mm. incredibly powerful because then you've got a peer on peer thing going on. So it's not a lecture from an adult or a parent or a teacher. It's literally your mates going, that's not OK, um, and helping them see that. So, yeah, it's great. No, fantastic. Are you able to share us a story 
um that's got a happy ending um i, I appreciate that some of this might be confidential but is there anything that you can share that you know that um, would inspire us so in terms of client stuff yeah or or, or, yeah. or working with working with youngsters or, or or training or what have you i think it's when there's probably two main categories in terms of young people they've asked questions either i can tell that they've been watching porn or they've got a, a porn habit which they are not happy with but they don't know what to do um or the other side of it tends to be the toxic relationship stuff so when they've kind of got brave enough to write those questions down and you can then kind of engage on that level it's that release of oh i'm okay i'm going to be okay because the minute you talk about it and someone isn't shocked or you know reprimanding them it's just about having that conversation it's just that freedom it brings and that's so important because otherwise we're potentially doing them a disservice and they'll grow up to be really anxious young adults you know with a lot of baggage that's hidden in the back and it doesn't need to be there so um i can't obviously give you detailed details but yes there have been those times when i've just been so thankful that they've opened up and i've been able to say stuff that's helped them process whatever's going on the same with adults you know talking to adults and there's stuff going on for them where just by having the conversations giving them the tools whatever it might be you can see that shift in how they are um and it's just rewarding it's beyond rewarding really no that's absolutely fantastic um right how do we get to work with you so the best way probably is to go onto the website which is www.rephrasesw.co.uk. And on there are all the social media handles. So you can contact the office via that way. Um, or you can contact me directly at pj at rephrasesw.co.uk. Fantastic. And I'm guessing you're on LinkedIn. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Come and see you on LinkedIn. Follow you on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and, and do you do much networking if we if we ever want to bump into you? I do. I did a lot at the very beginning, but I'm finding now partly time restrictions, but also it's a very niche topic. So it's not networking events are not necessarily the place where I'm going to find more business. Um, I love that kind of getting it out there. But when I've got to marry up time, my best, the best use of my time, sometimes it means I don't get to those events. Um, but periodically I do. I dip my toe in again. No, oh, fantastic. And what question haven't I asked you today that I should have done? uh what would i say to my 16 year old self oh no i'm gonna ask you that one in a minute i just wonder if i've missed anything that we um, i don't think so i think no. we've kind of covered it all really yeah good good oh it's been delightful chatting to you um before, before i'm gonna ask you that question in a second uh before we do that i'm just gonna let everybody know who my guest is uh next week and next week is going to be my very last show here on linkedin so you're my penultimate um, guest on this show, uh, but I will be bringing a new show. Uh, next week, I have got the one, the only Mark Ormrod. I cannot wait to catch up with him. I met him at a speaking event uh, in the summer. Uh, he really is Mr. Inspirational. So we're going to have a chat with him next week. Another Devon guy. So uh, keep it in the Southwest for, the, for my last two shows. Um, you've been lovely today, PJ. Uh, so my very last question is to you. Um, what advice would you give your 16 year old self? Um, I would say ignore self-limiting beliefs. Um, remember why you love what you do and use that to energize every move thereafter. Boom. That's perfect. Boom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> PJ, thank you so much for being on my show. Thank, thank you for all the amazing me. questions. No, no, no. Absolute pleasure. And uh, hopefully see you soon. Cheer everybody. Bye bye. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win.